Welcome back to our Nutramedical Report. And uh, coming on the program, we have our expert panel for preparedness, civil defense, as earth changes, and, of course, now the C-lection, the S-E-E election, actually. That's what we have. Two different uh, globalists. And you get to decide which form of... It's like walking into the doctor, and the doctor says, you know, you can have door A, you can have a stroke or heart attack or door B, we can give you a diagnosis of cancer. Uh, with Obama, we're going to have... Uh, a very rapid diagnosis of a number of things happening. But I want to give some, uh, my, my kind of, a, I call Friday pre election uh, analysis and predictions. I'm going to play a clip here from CNN. It's the latest post Sandy. The first thing is number one, uh, a lot of Tea Partiers and Libertarians that make up a pretty active chunk of the Republicans aren't going to vote, or they're going to vote for a Libertarian or another candidate, which means they're going to vote in a sense proxy wise for Obama. Number two, we're going to have a lot of what we call Christianizers, I call them. People don't realize, although Romney wears magic underwear and he's not a Christian, he's a, a, at least presenting himself now as a Christian. And he's going to be held to his systems by his vice president, who's a Catholic and who's very pro-life. His statements on stem cell research, on um, pro-life and other issues means the Romney we have now in 2012 is not the Romney that was a, a governor in Massachusetts. So we, we, it's our responsibility, not just Romney's, to, to hold to his promises, it's ours. But I see a lot of people as basically just saying they're not going to vote. Now, I know there's a lot of Republicans that tend to vote higher uh, per capita than Democrats, but uh, the second issue we're going to have is Sandy. And I believe it took the sales out of uh, Romney doing campaigning through the swing states. And uh, we're going to talk about this after this clip is played. The next thing is Romneyisms. Uh, Romney had lots of opportunities to go in attack mode, especially in the last debate against uh, the issues on Benghazi, and about many other libias from the, the the litocracy of Obama, but he didn't. And we need to have someone who's not just a nice guy, but an aggressive guy that will deal with liars. Uh, you know, you can't have a liar in chief like Obama get back in, but you also have to have a president that's willing to actually go on the attack and not always try to appear so nice that he lets people get away with things they shouldn't. And the fourth thing is the Electoral College. It's a very archaic system that even if you look at international voting, we don't really vote directly for the president. Where I'm voting, for example, by ballot and bringing it in on Monday, I'm not voting for the president. I'm voting for an Electoral College. So the Electoral College in some states is proportional in others. You basically get winner take all. It means that uh, we may get a president we don't want. That the My prediction is, uh, since, since the Sandy, that we're going to probably have about one and a half percentage uh, votes in favor of Romney across the nation. But my prediction is that we are likely to see between voter fraud and Sandy and the other uh, very obscene uh, commercials like the latest one from Michael Moore with uh, 97-year-old ladies cursing uh, and, and threatening violence, uh, we're likely to see an Obama presidency. What will this do? We're likely to see a GOP uh, majority in the Congress and the Senate. The Senate will probably be either deadlock zero. We're almost certainly going to see a Republican Congress still. We will see gridlock, which means we're going to hit the fiscal cliff, withdraw billions of dollars from the military, so it means our military can't respond to a real military challenge. And we won't have the money to either deal with environmental disasters in the nation, and we will, uh, because Israel will see that they don't have, quote, the support, one of the things that's going to probably delay uh, a, uh, a, a an attack or a coordinated attack, and if anything happens, it'll be Israel proceeding on their own without any integration to our military, which is even worse because uh, there needs to be collaboration if you're going to do anything. So I want to play this clip, and then we want to get John's opinion on it. And and uh, so let's cue it up and play it from CNN uh, just literally a very short number of minutes ago. Let's play this clip. go to voting days and many had wondered if Hurricane Sandy would just sweep away this campaign. Obama's decision certainly to put off his rallies, focus on the recovery, may actually be paying off. Just take a look at those numbers there. On the 26th of October, just a few days ago, Obama was 0.7% behind Romney. Remember, Romney took a lead after that first debate between the two leaders. On the 30th, four days later, Romney still ahead, 0.8%. But we're looking at that number today. Two days later, Obama's actually surged up 
to tie with Romney. So the two of them neck and neck. But remember, that is the popular vote. It is tight. The president, though, is elected in the U.S. by the Electoral College of 538 votes that are split over the 50 states of the United States. And if you look at that map, President Obama certainly has more reason to smile. Those blue states and the light blue states are the Obama camp, if you like. The Romney camp are the red and the pink states. And so far, this is where they're, they're at up. Obama seems to have about 237 of the Electoral College votes and 206 now going to Romney over there. Who's left? The people in the middle are called the swing states. They could swing each way. So for the moment, according to the CNN projections, Obama has 237, Romney has 206. There's a toss-up of about 95, but it's a comfortable lead really for Obama for the moment. Yeah, it's enough. Let's uh, hear your opinion, John, because that's where I see it going. I, I mentioned this several months ago. I think that, that Obama, through the October surprise, which is Sandy, has not only killed a lot of people, but also destroyed uh, the area along the coast of New Jersey and Pennsylvania and other areas, New York. Uh, not only has he stalled the campaign of Romney was surging, but he's also, uh, you can be certain with Soros and these horrifying commercials from uh uh, you know, with 97-year-olds cursing, uh, we have the the Democrats, who are progressives, are actually communists. To be, let's face it, they believe in centralized control, not rational, I mean, responsible socialist care, where you take care of your sick and your elderly, which you can see Romney would do, and you'd see that the Republicans don't want to kill grandmother and take her wheelchairs, etc. Uh, and when I, I just want to hear your opinions, Ann and John, because when I saw this clip this morning, I thought. You know, this is where I see this going. This is going to be a crisis where we're going to get another term of Obama at the, at the helm since Sandy happened, caused by the affiliates of Obama uh, literally creating the storm and steering it. Because I know, having worked at, at Space Command, this is doesn't just smell like it. I'd absolutely put a pound of blood on it that they have now stolen the election with the October surprise, which is Sandy. Right. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Bill. Always good to be with you. Um, I just showed up at the uh, Preparedness Expo in Springfield, so I just have uh, three or four minutes here. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, the engineer didn't play these clip in my ear, so I can't comment on it. But I do have a, I do have some uh, input uh, that we discussed earlier today, sir. Uh, yeah. I have uh, privileged confidential information from a supervisory level person inside the Department of Homeland Security that this uh, storm and the consequence of this storm are being intentionally manipulated to be far worse than they need to be. Uh, they're, right. We're withholding aid and comfort to the victims uh, by design and by intent to make the storm far worse than it needs to be. Yeah, in other words, they're slowing, for example, they're slowing uh, even people coming in from other jurisdictions to fix power lines and up in areas say they're non-union, right. so they can't let them in. They're withholding aid, so people are literally freezing in the dark and hungry and, and dehydrated. Uh, this has been prolonged on purpose, and we know that because of the on-the-ground team by Obama and to get out the vote teams and stopping the swing state uh you know, face to face with Romney and his surrogates, this has literally, right. literally truncated the Romney campaign, and I believe this is the October surprise that is the oh, theft. Agree. Plus, the plus, of course, the, the theft with the voter fraud. We know George Soros has major shares in these voting electronic voting companies. I know that somebody said tried to say tag Romney has some uh, whatever. This is a pile of garbage. This storm was manufactured by the Abomniites, and it was steered by these high tech uh, black op projects so they would cut off the uh, swing states because they. I absolutely know that there's not enough heat. We talked about this with Professor McCanny the other day. We talked with Stan Dale. This is absolutely a politicized system. The same way as we've now got the reveal, revelation yesterday with Carl Gallup's that the issue in Benghazi was an attempted, uh, if you want to call it kidnapping, there was going to be an exchange for the blind shake that they accused that caused 9-11, etc. This is all Obama literally staging things for public consumption to absolutely. get back into power to do their communist destruction of America. Again, Obama gets in, fiscal cliff, gridlock, a lot of fighting in court over the fact that Romney will have the popular vote by, I, I predict, 1.4% at least. And we're going to have a big Dr. battle Bill, on our hands. You all have a great show. Take care.
Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report that we have in Morrison. And uh, you heard my little diatribe there in analysis in that audio clip. Uh, you know, I'm you know to say you have to breathe in deep and smell uh, the data and the analysis. And, and uh, above all else, I try to be logical, even if it hurts. Uh, you know, even if you say, you know, bite on this leather because we're going to pull a bullet out of you, uh, like in the old West, you got to bite the leather. The fact is, if we look at the true hard facts of it and the honest data analysis, and I have a couple of, uh, uh, pundits that have brought out information on this. One of them is Nate Silver. Now, Nate Silver has been right more than wrong, and there's been other people right more than wrong, but I see term number two of Obama. Term number one is Obama dictator. Term number two is Obama false prophet antichrist. And people think that's exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. The Green Agenda we're going to have on Monday, Brian Sussman on talking about this, uh, author of the Eco-Tyranny. Um, and what do you think of what's going on now? Because we have earth changes, we've got these sinkholes, we've got extreme weather where we've had a whole bunch of plants that have had uh, power outages. Uh, we don't have any preparation done by the Obama administration to deal with natural disasters, uh, such that it'll cause station blackouts or major problems. And it appears that, according to John, there's actual withholding of material to amplify the suffering of the people. I just got another report from Dr. H. Watt, uh, confirming that as well, and other sources I have, that Obama wants to amplify it and he wants to take out of the stage the whole dialogue with Romney because people want to believe these attack ads that Romney has got a horn and tail because he wears magic underwear. And the fact is that what we're given here is a horrifying result. This is a, a, a literally another stolen election from my viewpoint. This is really horrible. Well, you know, we had what we had the election that was uh, decided by the Supreme Court. So uh, we've had that and we survived that. And then we had the election that was um, who was that? This is different. By? This this is uh, different. The agenda, of, the, the 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 agenda by Obama is so noxious, uh, and, and even Valerie Jarrett, the, the senior White House uh, kind of person, she literally sat there and they showed a picture of her, warning that there's time for payback for anybody who didn't support Obama. The people around Obama are even, in some ways, more scary than Obama. I mean, Obama's an empty suit, but the people around him, they're like a like a gaggle of demons. Not like a gaggle of crows, you know. And by the way, you know what they call a group of crows? You know what they're called? The term for them? What's a, what's a group of crows called? They're called a murder. Isn't that interesting? So when you see like yeah. a 50 or 100 crows, they're called a murder of crows. <laughs> So well, okay, what we've got to say, we say the progressive Democratic Party are a murder. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I saw uh, Napolitano on uh, CNN this afternoon. She was talking to the, uh, to the people on the um, Long Island. And uh, she said, we're going to, you know, we're going to bring in supplies. And they, so then uh, Wolf Blitzer asked her, well, when, you know, why weren't they here Tuesday? And she said, "Well, they were here. They just we just didn't have the station set up. You know, yeah. they can spin this any way they want to. They're going to claim that they were in there on Tuesday, but the residents are saying that they still don't have water. They still don't have food. And then when they go to the centers to get the water and the food, when they come back, they've discovered that their homes have been looted." Well, and in fact, is uh, these uh, organizations like Facebook and Twitter should shut down these ability to use these services to actually go in there and cause havoc. Remember now, three years before the so-called Arab Spring, they met in New York City to allow U.S. corporations to allow Facebook and Twitter to do regime change in these countries in North Africa, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. This is a scheme. And the fact that these organizations are allowing this to happen, allowing this to happen, to me, is a crime by these organizations. They're complicit with the crime. If you made, for example, a threat against the president or someone, you rightfully, no matter who it is, including Obama, you rightfully would be arrested. But when they're saying they're, we're going to go rip off the TV store and we're going to go down to Grandma's house and we're going to steal all her stuff and her jewelry, that's a crime, and they damn well know that it's going on. They should stop it. I don't understand why these intelligence these we literally arms of the intelligence agency want to amplify the, the suffering of the people by withholding food water and supplies and even proper protection or restarting power and bringing in generators they should be flying in by c-130s and helicopters so they can get power back to these people even minimal power it's just well, you know, sickening uh, and then obama's still going to get in even though he's incompetent because he smiles nicely he looks telegenic like excuse me 
I'm just getting so disgusted with the stupidity of the population, I call it vicious ignorance. The average American looks at Obama, and just because they've truncated and he looks presidential walking around with photo shots with the, with the paid-for media, it just makes me ill that they won't allow a man who could solve the problems of the jobless, who could bring back an economy, who could bring back a strong America that doesn't gut the military, and bring back a balanced budget with his uh, vice president, Paul Ryan. Instead, we're going to get four more years of Obama. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm like here holding the sides of my head. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is this looks like it's going to happen. It's like I'm I'm in a train and, and the, the, the conductors made the wrong switch on the trail line and we're heading toward the side of a mountain. That's what it feels like. It feels like, oh, my God, we got about 30 seconds left to impact. OK, well, I'm looking at the nuclear power plants and there were. Um there were six of them that were affected by Sandy. And, yes, uh, some of, a lot some of, them, of them. I got even more down. reports, too. I got more reports, by the way, from Christina Consolo about other ones that aren't even listed by the NRC as well. well the one yeah, tell, tell us about the ones. Tell us about them. Yeah, the, um, the, <laughs> the uh, Salem uh, plant looks like it's in dire trouble. Uh, they have broken water pumps. And uh, it just yeah, they uh, went hot shut down, didn't they? They went into hot shut down, and they're yeah. venting. They're venting into the atmosphere. Oh, and what are they venting? I'll bet it's not flowers and lilies and and fragrant perfumes you'd have coming out of your little thing plugged into the wall, your wall plug in. It probably starts with radio. And the word is isotopes, meaning thorium, strontium, uh, and tritium. All those nasty, nasty things that can give you cancer and cause brain damage and birth defects, etc. And they're venting now. So besides the people suffering in the area, in a huge population zone around at 100 and some plus miles, they're now being irradiated too, aren't they? That's what. That was my point. Yeah, you hit my. You hit the ball. You made a home run there. Yeah. Uh, they said they played a game of chicken with the hurricane there at Sandy. They were operating, uh, the reactor number one was operating at 100% power when Sandy hit. And uh, and they had to have, well, they had a uh, scram. And uh, now it'll be at least three days before they can get it back up. But the other problem is that they lost, that they lost the um, um, uh, five of the six critical water pumps. So they got to replace those pumps. Pull water from the river to cool the reactor. I mean, if you you can't do that with one pump. So yeah. So what's going to happen is we have a number of plants that are hanging on by their fingernails. If the storm was prolonged, or if they couldn't get the diesel fuel to plants like the uh, Oyster Creek. Uh, these plants will lose complete control of these now hot reactors that need permanent cooling and can't have it, and they're venting off radiation as we speak to the eastern seaboard. Exactly. Amazing. And, of course, Obama will primp and walk around with his hands in his pockets and talk to Governor Christie, who's kissing his, his butt, which is just so treasonous. It's just sickening. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, a website I want people to kind of go to is called HAARP, H-A-A-R-P status.com. You'll see a map there that shows HAARP activity, of course, in the northeast that's tied in with the uh, Sandy, but there's also HAARP activity on the west coast, and we've had both the northern end of the extension of the uh, San Andreas Fault, which is out toward the Queen Charlotte Islands. The southern extension in the last year has had a lot of big earthquakes, seven-plus earthquakes down in the Sea of Cortez, down in Mexico, and uh, in other areas near the Mexican-U.S. border. Uh, we're due for a major superquake on San Andreas. And uh, I have a feeling that besides the October surprise, which is Sandy, we're going to have a November or December surprise, which is going to be a super quake, so that uh, Obama can look like the hero again uh, after he gets reelected by stealing the election with Sandy, voter fraud, and of course the attack commercials, which make uh, Romney look like he's uh, uh, too brick shy of a load, and of course the, the devil is so in the sun himself. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, I, think we um, should, I think we should tell people to go to the national parks because then they'll be under the jurisdiction of the park rangers. And I don't think the park rangers will shoot them. 
<laughs> go to the park. Yeah, well, they, if they, unless they look, they go in a bear suit, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so now, again, Salem Nuclear Plant still offline, broken water pumps. That was the report from yesterday. Uh, you sent me that early this morning. There's also a report here the oldest nuclear reactor in New Jersey's Oyster Creek is still put on, uh, still on, on alert. Uh, I got some reports, too, from uh, Christina Consolo, uh, who also sent me. She said she's still sick. Uh, here it is. You mentioned earlier hot springs disappear uh, after earthquakes in Canada. After the earthquake, the hot spring disappeared, which means all the hot water and everything just, where the hell did it go? Uh, that's significant. It means there's major tectonic activity occurring along the northern extension of the, of the of this same plate that extends into California, and the southern extension of it into Mexico and the Sea of Cortez has had very big activity, which means in between there's a lot of recoil stored up in those rocks. Uh, a six-inch move of that recoil will bring down all of the overpasses along the California freeways. All. Not just some of them, all of them. And I think we're due for a big quake here soon. Yeah, I don't know USGS, if we're... Yeah, the USGS doesn't say that they... They say like a 20% chance in the next 50 years, but I think it's higher than that. I would say about a 10% chance in the next 60 days. How's that? <laughs> That's a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, I'd say 10%. And I would be. Uh, I would look for other signs. I'd look for uh, a near pass of the moon, which we call the apogee of the moon, where it's close. I'd look for syzygy, which is alignment between the moon and the sun. I'd look for things like, uh, you know, December 21st, which is, by the way, a time when there's we have these, you know, different seasons where there's alignments. And I'd look for, uh, you know, these other things because they tend to amplify the effect of pull on the Earth gravitationally. Uh, we also, when the Earth gets, can get wrung by a coronal mass ejection, it rings the Earth with energy, and that energy can release energy that's locked up in the rock. So if there's a CME within three to four days after that, uh, two to three days, you can have a major superquake release because the energy is like a spring coiled up, and all it needs is a little tiny bit of energy, and it'll release. So I would say uh, if you light up these things and if you look for coronal mass ejections, we're likely to see a West Coast quake here probably in the next, uh, I'd say, six months to two years. But it's getting increasing quite a bit, especially when you see the harp thing, because we know that they a lot of these technologies overlap in terms of how they're applied and the frequencies that are applied to pump the energy into the tectonic plates. I was told that you can trigger off earthquakes, you can remove storms, you can do basically almost anything to the planet now. They've turned the planet into a weapon of mass destruction. And America has the most advanced of these technologies. Russians have them. The, even the people in Dubai have them. If they want to start weather, they can put these radar arrays up and make it rain. But America has way more advanced than anybody, including even the Russians. They have mobile capacitor systems that can change and move the weather. We literally have turned the planet into a weapon. And uh, that's very disturbing, especially when you know that they've turned this on America in the Northeast to steal an election. That's what I see. Um, there's also been um, um, uh, seismic activity under Mammoth Mountain. And uh, so uh, that, that's unusual because we don't usually hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really interesting. She also mentioned to her in a report, although she's still uh, not well, she said it's around right now, a west coast, watching Cascadia, which is a subduction zone up there, because every two to three hundred years they have a major superquake. Uh, Ever expanding sinkhole, which is watching uh, Lake Assumption of Sandy's aftermath. There's apparently uh, the Comanche Peak is a uh, hot shut down today, which is, uh, she listed the NRC site. Salem problems are, are not reported on the NRC site. And the Fermi 2. I uh, had an oil spill yesterday as well, Fermi 2 area. So all of these are happening, and the U.S. Geological apparently is reporting the Salton Sea volcanoes. Now, Salton Sea has the San Andreas Fault Line goes right through the Salton Sea, which is, you know, what, about 100 miles from here, 120 miles. The Salton Sea is about the same size as the Dead Sea, and they've had these really weird sulfury smells that have, the prevailing winds carry toward Los Angeles, and they thought it was just kind of rotting debris and dead fish at the bottom of the Salton Sea. No, 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 no. This is the same thing that happened before the major superquakes that occur in volcanic eruptions in Italy before Pompeii and Vesuvius, etc. And these things that are happening, uh, like, you know, are, are very likely t warning us that something, if it's going on in the Salton Sea, that they're having, uh, something's going to happen. Earthquake swarms, region wide rotten egg smell, tells me something big is going to happen here along San Andreas. Yeah, the raw egg smell is uh, hydrogen sulfide, and right. it's very poisonous. And so, right. if you if you smell that, and they have they actually have detected that odor in San Diego, 
and that's quite a ways from the Salton Sea. Anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's about 140 miles uh, away, but that, it depends. The prevailing wind tends to carry toward Riverside and toward Los Angeles, uh, west, west uh, uh, east LA, and uh, that tells you if it's that concentrated, you can smell it. And you, and you only need uh, five parts per million to be able to smell it. Below that, you can't smell it. Well, but you don't need much more than that, and, it, and it'll kill you. I think it's like 10 or 15 parts per million, and you're dead. Yeah. So when you yeah, smell so. it. You want, definitely want to do something about it. Right, it's very I bad. Mean, you, it's very, yeah. but it's also accumulated. We like most people don't realize this is toxic to your cytochromes when you're creating mitochondrial energy. Uh, it's toxic to uh, your neurological function. It can literally knock you down. Uh, you know, deader than a dead fish. I mean, you, you have pipe, steam workers working around gas and, pa- and pulp and paper mills or the uh, the gas plants in northern Alberta. If there's a hydrogen sulfide release, they have hydrogen sulfide alarms. And if you don't get on your Scott Air Pack or your oxygen system. You're not going to get rescued out of there. You're dead as a doornail before you even hit the steel. And it's a heavy gas, so it, it tends to float on the ground. And right, it tends to stay down. So if you're up in a tower, you're more likely to be okay because it'll float downward. But if you're near the ground when the alarm goes off and that rises quickly up to where you're breathing it, you're dead. Yeah. Well, and there have been whole villages over in Africa who have, who well, have then, suffocated uh, to death. That happened in that lake where the toxic gas was coming out of the lake and it was hydrogen sulfide, and they literally burped up the gas and it just floated over a village and everybody died in their sleep. In fact, this is probably the gases that were released at the time of Egypt where the people that were the firstborn were in fancy beds near the ground and the less fortunate other members of the family were sleeping on higher levels in the house or on the roof. And so when it said that it took the firstborn, remember it's an environmental thing because you understand the physiology and the environmental issues that occurred with the plagues of Egypt, the firstborn always slept in a more fancy bed near the ground. So my guess is that the firstborn uh, was killed by hydrogen sulfide and these other gases. That, that is very possible. Um, yeah, I, I know people think it's the finger of God. So look, God is so prescient and, um, uh, and omniscient in his knowledge. He can use environmental and natural things because God knows everything. He knows every photon of energy and where it will be throughout the entire universe for all eternity. So he doesn't have to kind of just change physical laws. He just has omniscience, which shows even more power of of the Most High God. So when he tells you that, you know, Thera is blowing, you Egyptians uh, better let the Hebrews go. In Hebrews, he tells them you go up to this particular area of the Delta where you're not going to be downwind of all this garbage. Uh, That's why the Hebrews survived, because the Egyptians were directly in the line of fire of all this garbage happening to them. And there were probably uh, seeps of, of these toxic gases killing them. So... Well, you know, that's why even the tell your even the tell your occurrence that were occurring uh, because of, uh, at the time there were the passage of this object we call the red dwarf star. These tell your occurrence of the passage of the planetary sized objects that are passing by would cause tell your occurrence to make the, the 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 snakes and the bugs come out of the ground. Yeah, in my church we call that God's natural law. It is God's natural law is just as powerful and just as under the direction and control of the Creator God as if he waved his finger and changed the physical things right in front of you. Welcome back, and uh, we have Alexander Bachman. Um, I just want to repeat exactly what I mentioned in the break. When you want to trigger off an earthquake, and this is classified technology, so if you're listening there at the Homeland Security and all these agencies, this is how they do it. It's called piezoelectric slip threshold. Every rock face of every tectonic plate on Earth, and there's a new one in the Indonesian plate, you mentioned that last weekend, has a harmonic base frequency and other subharmonic frequencies that if you hit them, you're going to get what's called resonance. Those resonant frequencies, you build up energy. It can take days, weeks uh, in order to build up enough energy that the rock faces start to vibrate. The rocks literally physically vibrate in harmonics to get giant waves. And when they reach what's called the mu or piezoelectric slip threshold, the rocks will slip until the muir resistance starts to resist that so many seconds. So if it releases six inches or a foot of recoil, you get an earthquake of a certain size. There's evidence that HARP is now activated on the West Coast, and this is directly tied in with the San Andreas Fault extension up to the Queen Charlotte's. The extension down to the Sea of Cortez in Mexico uh, has shown major quakes of the same size, 7.5, 7.7, 7.8 in the last year and a half. I think we're within a matter of months, uh, and we have to look at these other factors of a major superquake, especially with the Salton Sea releasing enough hydrogen sulfide of volcanism 
right at the bottom of the Salton Sea, because remember, the geology is very similar to the Dead Sea, because the Dead Sea is along a major rift fault line that goes from Turkey all the way to Lake Victoria in, in, in Africa. It's the same kind of geology, in a sense. It goes right to the Great Rift Valley of Ethiopia in the largest volcanic area, open volcanoes on the Earth in Ethiopia. So um, what do you think, Alexander? I think something bad is coming. I think Obama stole the election with the Sandy, and I, my guess is if they're tuning this thing up and pumping energy in, they want to declare martial law after the election. Well, I, I, I think so, too. I think it would be a great opportunity in order to trigger more events, uh, natural events, because you can... Well, I, you know, what do you, I think they're ready to do martial law because I think they, are, they, they know the population will be so ticked off that the election was stolen, they are already preparing for response to the population. And so what they want to do is create a disaster as a cover to bring in martial law. And I think that uh, it's very likely they're going to do this. They don't want to do it so much on the west coast, on the east coast now, because there's so many nuclear reactors there. The whole country will be devastated completely and gone. Yeah, but on the west coast, we got Diablo Canyon and San Onofre, so we don't have too many reactors that are here. We got Diablo Canyon and San Onofre, so there's not a whole lot of reactors. But you got millions of people that could die. Uh, those overpasses, like going through Santa Ana, California, they're not going to be around. Those overpasses, when you get about 7.5 to 7.8 earthquake, they're going down. We've been talking about it extensively. We've been uh, analyzing and monitoring some important documentation. We do have it uh, on our website, and it, it's available to anybody that wishes uh, to email me. Uh, Project Black Hole is a project that was conducted by the USGS, and uh, it's a secret email that we have that supposedly was sent to the NSA by the USGS on a simulation back in the 90s of a, of a mega, mega thrust quake in the San Andreas fault line triggered at Palm Springs, where they view uh, more or less a 14 million death count. Right now, the by the way, now we the upthrust the the zone in Los Angeles. All right, yeah, Los Angeles is the only major city on Earth that's sitting radio right over what's called an upthrust zone, where they could have several meters of vertical upthrust that are immediately going to be released in the rocks. Which means there will be a ninety percent fallover of any building over four stories. Now, We're talking ninety percent. Why would they be planning since the since the nineties uh, an earthquake that would cost? Uh, several billion dollars to create, to create. I'm saying a created event, and put it on paper, and then send it uh, among themselves in uh, highly classified emails. Unless they want to do the same thing they did with Sandy. I mean, if people have not opened, well, they, want, they want martial law. You see, you remember the first term of Obama is dictator, basically, uh, with all his executive orders and National Defense Authorization Act and Obamacare. I mean, Obamacare is not hiring sixteen thousand, uh, fifteen to sixteen thousand more IRS agents with flak jackets and fully automatic weapons and getting access to your accounts. Obamacare is is only incidentally dealing with health care. When we look at all of the things that have been done, you know, and there were bad things done under Bush, you know, with the Patriot Act 1 and 2 and so on, but Obama's out Bush, Bush by a thousand times. What they're wanting to do next is they know they're stealing the election. I can see the Electoral College is going to give Obama probably 20 to 30 points. I'm guessing 20 points. Romney will win the popular vote by, I guess, 1.4 percent. We're going to have a crisis, and in the midst of that crisis, I see a major superquake coming. I see uh, it could be a, a flu epidemic, but I'm, my guess is it's going to be a natural disaster, so they have plausible deniability. And I'm saying it in advance because I'm seeing all the evidence that tells me that in the very near future, and if it's been manipulated like this one to be time precisely right before the election and the surge of Romney. This means that right after the election when everybody's really pissed really, really pissed that Romney's lost when he knows the election's been stolen. With voter fraud, there's people now doing electronic voting in various states and they have people have come out and said, well I voted for Romney and they tell him, no, you voted for Obama. And they tell him right now, this is before the election. So we it's know voter fraud is occurring already. It's already occurring. Remember also, we got the electoral college which should have been dealt with and now we have a situation where we're going to have a election which is going to be won by a fairly large margin by Romney that's going to, in spite of even the voter fraud, it would be even bigger because you only swing at about 6 or 7% even with voter fraud before it gets caught. Uh, so what's likely to happen here between Sandy, which is basically derailed Romney, uh, they need something, a natural disaster, because they want to declare martial law. 
Exactly, and suspend the elections in the process. So, uh, no, no, I don't think they're going to suspend it. They're going to do it after the election. I think that they're going to do it within days after the election. I think they're going to do it perhaps months. But I think that they're holding in reserve the idea. They're pumping in energy. When I see this map tell me this, and these massive gases over the last month or so being released from the Salton Sea, when I see the uh, extension fault line for San Andreas, we see these major superquakes. You're down in Mexico in Encinitas. We've been talking about the last few years, Alexander, how many big damn quakes there are on the Mexican side of the extension. They don't call it San Andreas. By another name, it's the same fault line down well, through the, the same, Sea of the Cortez. Fault line, the San Andreas fault line goes straight into the Gulf of Mexico. That's why Baja California is separated from the North American plate. Right. That's what makes it. In fact, it's such a big fault line. It's probably one of the largest, most dangerous active fault lines on the planet. It's massive, and uh, we know they've been, uh, the, you know, detonating explosives within the fault line. That's, that's a given fact north of Calexico in the military areas. And we know that they have been trying to, uh, you know, help the fault line slip a little bit faster. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that, that's really that's really stupid. It's like uh, scientists from Harp came down to Ensenada in 2010. I spoke directly with one of the family members of the scientists that uh, confessed to us that the Harp people have been warning the, the scientific scientific community in Ensenada, which is the biggest one in Latin America, to evacuate Ensenada because they know of an impending event that's going to be created. Okay, let me explain what I would do if I was recommending a technology that would stop earthquakes. You know about sound dampening technology? You get when you get a Bose headphone set and you want to plug it in your plane or car you don't want to hear background sounds if you're in traffic yeah well you can do the same thing with that sound dampening technology for subsonic harmonics you listen to the earth you hear the frequencies coming in that are harmonically coming into the rocks and you damp it with counteracting energies that literally cancel it out noise canceling technology we could do the same thing pump in you know gigajoules of energy to constantly pump in energy to counteract building it waves these waves build up like charging a battery over days weeks and months earthquakes are not by chance you can have a, a pre-earthquake 20 years ago that charge is still in the rocks, and you just have to wait until there's enough energy surge from harmonics coming in from a solar mass ejection, from an earthquake elsewhere on the Earth, and from even doing stupid things like going in and hydrofracking. When you put in water and do other things, you change the tectonic force there. When you explode explosions down below, when you explode U.S. Army Corps engineer explosions to create a new underground city, you can also release these tectonic plates. When you use tunneling machines and you cross fault lines, you can release energy as well. I know this because I work with these guys so what people need to understand is i think we're sitting on the edge of something that if obama gets in he's just drooling and the people behind him to declare martial law okay i got the project right here it's project black hole and they they planned to create a 9.8 richter quake in Palm Springs, okay. California, back now, if that on the happens, April 1995. If that happens, 45% of the population of California, 36 to 40 million people, will be dead or dying. Well, I have the memos right in front of me, and it's a horror. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, people say, that won't happen. It's not just then. It's the months afterward where there'll be no electricity, food, water. There'll be roving gangs that are running around on motorcycles. It'll be, it'll be like Road Warrior on steroids. And people think, that can happen. That and can't happen. The project is out of White Sands, New Mexico. Right. But it's spending $2 billion to do this, so we need to know we have maniacs and devils in the White House, and if they're willing to do Sandy, if they're willing to steal the election with voter fraud, with electronic voter fraud, if they're willing to put on Michael Moore's videos, uh, having 